Welcome back to another video with me, Daniel Hindrikes. Today I will talk about .NET MAUI and my experience when I upgrading one of my apps. You may have seen my app called Catchlogger. It is a fishing diary for people like me that likes sport fishing. I built it with Xamarin Forms and it's still Xamarin Forms. It's a little bit embarrassing to say that, but that's true because this is just one of my hobby projects I work with when I have time. And um, the latest year I've been really busy with other things. I have not prioritized it, but I'm working with a .NET MAUI version. And in this video, I will show you some of my learnings, my mistakes, what plan I had. I have listened to a lot of sessions on conferences about this. I've listened to videos. And one of the persons I've listened to is David Ortino, the principal product manager from .NET Mao in this session on Tecorama in Belgium. Last year, I listened to his session, how to upgrade from Xamarin to .NET 7. So that was one of my guides to do this process. So I had a plan. I should create a new project because I want to use the single project stuff that are in .NET MAUI. You don't have to do that when developing MAUI. You can continue as you do in Xamarin Forms with the head projects and one project for shared. But I wanted to have the new single product because I think that is pretty nice. So when I have created a new product, my plan was to move the code step by step. Take the view models, move them to the new product, take the views, move them to the project, and take the platform specific code that are necessary, move them to the shared project. And fix all the breaking code, because I guess that there would be some breaking changes, and of course it became, but uh, it was not that much. So I think I can fix them pretty fast. And then my plan was to release the app and then continue with improvements, because that was one thing David told me during those sessions. The best thing is to get it up running on .NET MAUI and then continue to make improvements, optimize it and so on. Because otherwise you will never finish. So what I did, I rewrote my MVM library, TinyMVM. You maybe know about TinyMVM, it's a helper library for MVM that I created for Xamarin Forms, but I realized I can do this much better for .NET MAUI. Some of the stuff is not necessary anymore because MAUI have improved compared to Xamarin Forms. I wanted to use um, the source generators and stuff like that that comes with Community Toolkit. So Community Toolkit now is a uh, dependency there. So with TinyMVM, I will just tell you short what I did. I'd, as I said, I added dependency on community toolkit that MVM because I can use the base classes. I can use some of the methods there. I can use the relay commands. I don't need to have my tiny command and so on that reduce the code that I write, but I can still have the nice thing that, that I have added to tiny MVM still there. So, and if you are interested more about tiny MVM, I also created videos about that. So, I changed initialization style to .NET MAUI, .NET way, with a service collection extension, so you can just add that to the IOC like that. And I used the .NET DI container with TinyMVM for some reforms. There were a lot of different providers, and you can use it with Autos, but I had one for Autofac, one for Tiny IOC, and so on. But for .NET MAUI, I wanted to integrate more in the .NET ecosystem. Because if you remember, Xamarin Forms did not have any good support for dependency injection. They have the, I think it was called the dependency search, but I never liked to use that. And then I changed the view of model creation to make it more like a pure DI way. So instead of specifying in the view, in the sample what view model you will have with type arguments, I changed that you inject them in the uh, constructor of the view with dependency injection because I think that is more cleaner in a way that .NET developers are used to work. So I did that. Did more things than rewrote my MVM library. I changed to source generators for properties instead of FODI because I never liked to create setters and getters 
uh, and the backing field and all that you need to get uh, property change working. So I used Fodi, property, Fodi property changed, and that is a really good library for some reforms, but source generators are even better, I think. So I changed that and I used a community toolkit of MVM source generators there. Really great. And I changed the in-app messaging library. Before I used tiny pub sub that a colleague to me wrote, and I also been contributing to that. But here I wanted to substitute that with the community toolkit .mvm stuff because I already have that dependency and I wanted to reduce the dependencies. So, and I replaced the map provider. And the reason for that is that I have a lot of custom renders that did stuff with the, the map, but uh, instead of recreating that from Maui, I decided to go with a maps UI uh, library. And that means that I have to learn that library, I have to rewrite all the code uh, instead of just creating handlers or use uh, the compatibility renders. So the result here was that app is not yet released. I have focused more on improving it and make the app better than converting it to MAUI. That's a good thing because I have better code now and a better app, but it's not yet released. So what should I have done? Of course, I should have listened to David. I should have con converted it to .NET MAUI first and focus on the conversion. Then I should focus on improving, optimizing when I have done the whole app, not doing some migration there, fix that code and then optimize that part. I can do it step by step. So my learning, the plan was good. I had a good plan and I recommend other people also to follow that plan, but I did not do it myself. So upgrade before improving. And that means you don't have to release, but you should complete that step. So you have a new base point to work from. If you want to release it, if it's as good as it was with some reforms, you maybe can release it, but you don't have to. But it's good to make that step before you're going and optimize. And I should have used compatibility renders for my custom renders so that I could have everything working as it did before, before I start to change. Because I don't really improved the user experience by changing the map provider. Some parts was easier with Maps UI, but the users will not know about what map provider I use in the background. Of course, they see difference if I have different uh, tile provider, but I use OpenStreetMaps both before and now. The difference was that I now don't have to write a custom renderer or a handler for using OpenStreetMap as I did with the, the Summer Informs version. So that was a short video about my learnings of upgrading from Summer Informs to .NET MAUI. If you like this video, please press the like button, subscribe to my channel. And if you want early access to video and all the source code that I create for this channel, you should be a member of my channel. And of course, you also support the channel a bit extra if you became a member. So, see you next time. Bye-bye.